What's up everyone, my name is Nigark. welcome back, well, welcome to a new series. Today we're going to be starting up Stone Hearth. This is a little base building game, it just came out on Steam. It was kickstarted back in like 2013, so it's been a long time, it's been a long project. Very very long, this is released 375, but I did see that it just released on Steam a few days ago, so I wanted to give it a try. It's like $25 on Steam or something like that. But it's a base building game. I love me a good base building game. And I did play a little bit just to get acquainted with it and I just I just kept playing. So it was pretty fun. I'm just gonna start up a new game here on normal mode. And this is going to generate a map for, um, for us where we get to pick a square that's gonna have three different things. Either trees, plants, or wildlife. And I usually like to find something with a good balance here. Let's find... I think I saw one. Where was it? It was like... Yeah, like three trees, two wildlife, and two minerals. I think that's a good spot, and it's towards the middle of the map. So I kind of like that. Yeah, if your workers get stuck in a mine, you can build a ladder to get them out. Oh, that's a good idea. I didn't even think about that. I had issues with that yesterday, and uh, I would build, I would accidentally mine like a straight square down, and then I would have to like individually break blocks to try to make them a staircase, but I could have just built them a ladder. That's brilliant. Alright, we just have some basic, like, here's how you move stuff. And... Yeah. Oh, we have some water. I didn't even know there was water. Oh, that's cool, because it's gonna help us defend our base a little bit. Oh, that's nice. So, we get our little town banner. I'm gonna rotate it here so it's like... right here. And our settlement is created. I don't want it to be Deerdell. I want it to be, let's say, Nagarkton. No, that that's pretty boring. Uh, Nefher good wood at. Yes, Nefher. That is where we created. And we have, I'm just going to pause it right here so we aren't burning daylight. The UI in this game is really simple. This is just our general town info with some statistics with happiness, food, and shelter. And our places net worth. We have our inventory, which we currently have nothing, and we have a journal, which will be useful for seeing what our people are thinking uh, every day. This shows how many um, people we have. I believe this is how many are assigned to a job, and this is how many uh, footmen we have. This is where all of our people are. Uh, yeah, there's seven of them here, and I'm going to go over things that I would like to see in the future but not right now. This is just our harvest buttons, like gather trees and stone and stuff like that. So I am actually going to get them ready to harvest some of this wood over here and some of these berries. Just a little bit of stone. Just so that we have some stuff to start out with. This is the mining buttons. And this is where we create stockpiles. So immediately I'm going to want just a giant stockpile right there right max is 20 by 20 and this is going to be for resources only so only wood stone gems pelts and plants can go into the stockpile and then I'm going to want another stockpile uh, maybe not right there let's say I want another stockpile right over here yeah and this one is for everything but resources so all of my resources are going to come over here, and everything else is going to come over here, right? And then we have our build and design. I'll get into this a little bit later, because this is a little bit complicated. And then some fighting and defending stuff, and then some bulletins. So like, a traveler approaches hold holding a bundle. <laughs> Buck up, you look like you'd really benefit from something tasty. A traveler would like... The traveler would like to leave you one farmer's so. hoe. Okay, so that's one thing that we don't have to work towards now. So our people are going to go off and start doing the gathering stuff. These stockpiles are automatically made in their area. And I'm going to look over their stats really quick. So let's see, Freya is like 80 health, 80 morale. They have some attributes over here. I'm not sure uh, which, I'm not sure if all of these matter right now. I think some of them do and some of them don't. So like this person has 130 hit points. This one has 120. I'm just briefly looking at their hit points and stuff because 
I want my defender, my people that are going to have swords and shields, my footmen, to actually have a good amount of health instead of sending like a 80 health person out to defend the realm. But I think Freya is going to be good. Let's change job. And basically, there, let me pause this again really quick. When you start out, you're given a few little things. You're given a trapper's knife, and this person is holding the carpenter saw. And these items let you assign a job to your citizens. So, for example, I want Freya to be our carpenter. So we come in here, it says that this is what the carpenter does. It requires a carpenter saw crafted by the blacksmith. And we're going to approve Freya being our carpenter. All right. And then, let's see, who else was there? Let's look at their character sheets again. See, Riley has 130 hit points. Riley's probably going to be my defender of the realm. Wow, I actually have quite a few with 130 hit points. This person has 80 hit points, so I think they're going to be something like my farmer, because we were given a farmer's hoe, so I can just immediately make a farmer. And then the carpenter has to build what's called their workshop. The little carpenter's workshop. This is where they're going to do their work. And I'm going to have it right next to the stockpile so they can just go from here, build it, and then go back and forth as they need. Admittedly, they'll be going from here, here, all the way over here. But we'll ignore that fact for right now. Let's see. Let's find someone that had 120 hit points and maybe a little bit more speed. Okay, 110. 100 speed. That's pretty nice. So I think Niall is going to be our trapper. Change jobs. Because we were given a trapper's knife to start off. And now, because we have a farmer, we have a farm zone. So we can zone out a few of these. And I like to make them 10 by 10. Actually, let's remove that one. Let's do it like this. 10 by 10. And these are the different plants. Turnips are fast growing, but not very nutritious. Again, with carrots, it's pretty bland. Corn is slow growing, but super nutritious. Pumpkins are big, round, and fast growing, but tasty. Not really. So I'm going to have a crop diversity here. I'm pretty much going to have one of each. Let's get some turnip. And let's get some carrot. And I think one person can handle all of these. I'm pretty sure. In fact, I'm gonna get one more just to just to kind of push it a little bit. More corn, because it's super nutritious. Okay, and now we have our trapper because they were assigned their job, and this can zone up to 50 by 50. And basically, they just put traps in an area and capture animals, and uh, skin them, and you get meat from them and stuff like that. So we're going to assign a trapper spot like that, and maybe a little bit more, because I know they can handle a zone bigger than that. Let's do something like that. Yeah, so this entire zone is trapper central. He's going to come in, and he's going to lay down some traps, and maybe some animals will get stuck in there, maybe not. So, now we go to the carpenter's workshop, and we can check out... Oh, well... We can check out some of the things that they can make. So like a farmer's hoe here only takes one wood. But we were given one of those for free, so we don't really need one of that. A wooden practice sword promotes a hearthling into a footman. All of our people are called hearthlings. It's a little bit silly, but... Yeah, this promotes someone into a footman. I'm actually going to build two of those because I would like to have two footmen pretty early on in the game. And then I'm also going to just get a bunch of beds ready. 10 mean beds. They aren't very comfortable, but they're better than sleeping on the ground. So what our carpenter is going to do is they're going to gather up the resources they need, and they're going to start building the, the things in their queue going down. So they're going to start with this, and then once that's finished, they're going to come down to this. And once that's finished, they're going to keep going down until it's all the way done. And if we wanted to remove something, we would just take it and put it on the trash can. But we aren't going to, and we could rearrange things, but I'm also not going to. So, they're just going to get started on the swords. And, let's figure out who was our big health people here. Scarlet Mont? Yeah, Scarlet Mont. Guess who gets to be 
A footman. The footman is a melee fighter, a good choice for the backbone of your town's defense. Wooden practice sword crafted by the carpenter. There you go. You are now a fighter. Oh, and I see some ore up here. So, I'm going to get myself a ladder, and I'm just going to build it up here. And I may actually build another one even further up so I can start mining some of that stuff. Yeah, I think I'm going to build another one right there. And then I'm going to tell these people to start mining a tunnel back. Just a little bit for now, because if you queue up too many things, your people will... Oh, Jesus, they will go crazy for a very, very long time. And it can take a long, long while for things to actually get done. Yeah. And I'm thinking about breaking up the... Oh. Here we go. Freya Jovil has achieved Carpenter level 1. So if we click on her and her character sheet, we will see her job abilities level 1 for Carpenter. The Carpenter can now make a solid array of basic furniture. So you may have seen when we when we were looking before that some of these things were grayed out. No longer. No longer are they grayed out. We can actually make some of these things. Shepherd is an upgrade to the Trapper thing, so we don't really need one of those right now. Uh, Mason's hammer and chisel. Uh, yeah, let's actually get one of those relatively soon. But I'm thinking about breaking up the series into days. So like my very first day after like morning and we see the report to see if we get a new person, which I'll cover that in a little bit as well. Once we see that, then I'll cut it and we'll go on to the next day and the next video. I think that will be a good way to cut up the series until I decide that, you know, no more and that's that. So here's our little footman, Scarlet Mont. You can see her with her sword. And you can see the job abilities that she'll get when she starts to level up. As they do their job, they gain experience and they just, they level up and they get cool things. How's this going? Yep, so they got the ladders up, it looks like. And now it's just a matter of time before they go over there and they start mining things up. Yeah, everyone's getting ready to uh, relax for the night. And how many beds did I manage to get done? Uh, we're going to come over here and place an item. And we're going to put down some of these. Hopefully we get more done because we do have seven people and I don't want anyone to have to sleep on the floor and feel left out for the night. But that may be the case. Oh, someone achieved chopper level one. Long walk have increased the chopper's... Long walks have increased the chopper's foot speed. And they also got more HP. It's pretty good. Uh, are we getting another bed? Yep, there's... Oh, they put it down immediately. Okay. That's good. So yeah, some people are sleeping on the beds. And we might be able to see a journal here. Yeah, hunger is good for discipline. Uh, 24 hours without food. I'm sure I could find an opportunity here if I weren't so hungry. Why wow, I went a whole 24 hours without food. So it seems like we have a food issue. And a way to alleviate that is finding things like these berries that you can harvest uh, for just a meager amount of food. They don't actually cut down the bushes. They just gather the berries off of it, which is pretty cool. But... Yeah, having a food shortage is definitely not something that you want because you don't want your people to be starving. You don't want little starving Marvins. And this person is still working on beds. Good. While everyone else is slacking off, they're still working. Let's fast forward just a little bit. They are hard at work. Oh, everyone is starting to wake up again. And it looks like this person is going to go start mining, possibly. And down here we have... Oh, no, they're going for food. Probably a good idea. Down here we do have some different vision versions. So, like, I could slice the terrain at a certain height. So I could see things like that. Or I could show an x-ray version, which doesn't really help because I don't have tunnels right now. And what I'm thinking is I might try to do an underground civilization at some point. I haven't I haven't successfully done it yet, but I would really like to. I think it would be pretty cool. Because the buildings the build and design button it can be nice, but it's also very frustrating when it doesn't 
work with what you want to do with it. I'll place down the rest of these beds so all of my people have a place to sleep at night. And the night is almost over. So they're just going to come place all that down. Our farmer is hard at work. I may have given them a bit too much stuff to do. Because it doesn't look like any of this is planted quite yet. So I may have to actually... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready to have one more worker turn into a farmer. So we're going to make a farmer's hoe. And I also made the shield because our footman will automatically find the shield and equip it. So that they will have one more defense so that when they do get into a fight, things are not quite so terrifying for them. Also, this little bar down here, I believe, is some sort of like performance bar, like your latency or your FPS or something. I haven't had a whole lot of success in uh, figuring that out. And here's our daily update. Immigration report. So each day we have an immigration report. Basically, if we meet all of these requirements, we get another hearthling. Or we have the option to get another hearthling. So we needed 50 food, which we had because I collected a bunch of the berries. We needed a high morale, so people can't be starving, they can't be seeing all of their friends die. That's, that's bad. They need a high morale, and then we need a net worth. So our city has to be a certain size, so we have to have a certain amount of things for people to want to come join us. And we didn't meet the net worth requirement, so maybe on the next day we'll be able to do that. But, I think I'm going to wrap it up right there. Oh, a caravan approaches. Uh, I come bearing goods for trade. Do you want to give me one sword for two chairs? No thanks. A lot of the times I don't trade with those guys. Anyways, yeah, if you want to see more of Stone Hearth, the best way to let me know is by leaving a like or a comment or something on the ch on the video so that I know that this is something you're interested in seeing more of. And, yeah, I mean, subscribe to the channel if you do want to see more. <coughs> Jesus, subscribe to the channel if you do want to see more Stone Hearth. And my name's Nagark. Thank you for watching.